Hi there, this is Professor Juris, and um, I just wanted to make you a quick video and go over some creative ideas that I have um, that you can use to um, as photographic backgrounds, uh, different things you can use. If you're a beginning photographer or a studio photographer just starting out, um, it's nice to have a bunch of different kind of backgrounds to work with. So what I'm going to do in this video is cover um, some of the different things and ideas that I've used over the years to um, create photographic backgrounds. So um, one of the things right here I'm going to start with in this photograph, um, I did a whole series of my um, uh, dog Maya on this, on this background right here, and I'll show you a couple uh, different variations of it. But um, this is actually the, the cover of my hot tub. People, um, you know, didn't realize that when I took this, but um, the dog's just laying on the cover of the hot tub, and it was this nice blue color. But the, the thing about this is is I've actually used this material um, when I had a, a, a brick-and-mortar um, photographic studio. I used this as a background, um, and I would get this at the fabric store, and I it's... Um, kind of like a, a fake leather material or um, I believe it also is called Naga hide is if you if you go into the store and ask for it but you could go into like a Joanne fabric store or um, different stores and find this material so uh, this is a good material and it comes in this it comes in a number of different colors um, I used to have this in brown and I used to have it in green and it, it's very painterly like so it'll save you from um, you know, having to spend a lot on a background. Although the, the only thing is it doesn't come um, in in really a, a wide width for like a portrait studio or something if you wanted to do a, a group portrait on it. But it works really well for uh, single portraits. The brown one um, that I had, I used for a ton of bridal portraits and uh, business portraits and stuff and even like seniors. But um, so this is just like one idea. Let me show you another picture from this background here so you can kind of get an idea of um, how it works. So this is a, another picture that was taken on the, the, same, um, the same background, the hot tub cover, but it's just on Naga hide material again. And you could easily, you know, have done this in the studio. I just did this outside with natural light, but um, it could have been, you know, done in the studio under lights. Um, so you can use it for commercial products and stuff like that. It um, is very nice, and um, it's not super reflective either, which is um, kind of interesting because um, it, it, you would think with, with photographic lights, it, it is like a vinyl material. You would think it would be have a lot of hot spots, but I've never had that problem working with it in a studio. Um, even if I would, per se, use a background light on it, I didn't have, like, reflective glare on it, but... Um, so it's a real nice material to work with and I'll show you a shot in the same background with black and white using it in black and white um, so that's the same blue background just captured in black and white and this is a pretty famous photograph it's called the zucchini eater um, and it's in a number of uh, museum collections um, but um, you know, I really like the shot, but you can kind of see um, the, the use of the background in this, too, if you shoot in black and white. So it does take on a, a nice um, feeling, even in black and white. And uh, this is just a, a fun portrait I did of one of my friends um, up in Youngstown. And this was taken around, I would say, 1980, maybe. So it's pretty old. But this is using that background so you could kind of get an idea of how it looks um in a studio setting and this is again done with studio lights so um you know a fabulous background to work with and again this was just shot in black and white and then um sepia toned but it shot with a Hasselblad camera but um nice background to work with and fairly cheap I think you could you know get a piece of this for under twenty dollars as compared to you know buying a photographic background um, that's going to cost you a hundred dollars or so. So but we're going to look at a number of different options here. So let's get started. One of the um, you know things I, I hear from students a lot, if or even somebody maybe that's starting out a studio, is like how to save some money. So uh, one of the things it's it's nice to have also is a full black background. Um, and you could simply get a piece of canvas. I'm going to show you some raw canvas later, and you could paint it with flat 
flat black paint and that'll give you a, a nice background um, you know the top the top shelf background if you're really looking for the best is to um, go into a fabric store and actually get a large um, you know piece of black velvet material because black velvet will absorb all of the lights and it'll give you a totally you know black background so if you were looking at it on on film as a negative um, you would just see a totally clear area and so that's really good if you want to do like double exposures and stuff is um, a black background but a black sheet is um, probably one of the cheapest ways and easiest way to get yourself a black background and this is at JC Penney's I just pulled this up online at JC Penney's I think I just googled black sheets and um, and this came up and the the nice thing about this is is that they have all these sizes in black here and you could actually get a California King um, size and you know that's just huge I know um, as far as it goes so that will give you a nice big background for example if you wanted to shoot a couple um, or if you wanted to shoot even three or four people a small family this would be big enough I would think that it would cover the um, you know the whole area uh, behind the people so you don't have to do any Photoshop um, rubber stamping or stuff in the picture so that the background totally covers the image and uh, again very cheap so for for twenty five dollars you can get a California King um, sheet flat sheet that um, is black and you could also get it in other colors too you know if you wanted to you know try another color for a background um, fairly plain but um, I think the black one is probably the most useful to get to start with especially um, you know in a studio situation when you're doing portraits so that's one th one op option that you have for getting a black background and again the best if you if you want to get the best if you're you know starting out you're really uh, you want to have a solid black background for for low key portraits or for business portraits, um, uh, and just for a number of different things. You might want to just invest in the piece of black velvet. And I'm thinking a piece of black velvet um, material that's the same size as this this California King is probably going to cost you over a hundred dollars. But um, you know the the key to, or the trick is going to be I haven't cert googled that but I'm I'm sure that um, you know the key will be finding a piece that's big enough um, to use so that that'll be the the hardest thing to do is just finding it but once you find it you you'll be all set with um, black velvet if you want to use that. So another choice that you have um, for to get yourself a variety of backgrounds. Uh, backgrounds is to uh, go to a fabric store this is the web page from Joanne Fabrics and you know I just pulled this up and again you'd probably the the shortest amount you would need would be about three yards so I mean this is um, you know Tommy Bahama background right here and this is pretty cool and this would um, this would look nice behind a, a portrait um, you know maybe for senior portraits or something to give you a little bit of edge in that field but they have a, a ton of different um, a ton of different you know background materials that you can use and choose from that you know this might look really nice as far as a um, and it's only twelve dollars a yard but so for thirty six dollars you would have this very painterly um, you know flower flower background that um, you know this is actually really nice I, I kind of might go get that myself but uh, for, for doing things but you know you look at the fabrics and um, again the width is usually about 54 to 60 inches so it's just the width wise of these these materials are this is 54 inches right there it says is enough to, to do you know maybe a couple and um, for sure a single person but not like a family portrait but again and you'd want to get about three or four yards of it going down so it goes from the ceiling to the floor um, to make sure that the, the whole background is, is covered in the picture. But, you know, a cheap way to get a, a cool background in a lot of different varieties. And you can even go to like Walmart, you know, and look at their material spools. A lot of times they'll have stuff on sale that they're, you know, practically giving the material away. So, um, you know, that's that's one thing to do right there. Then I also came across uh, this material, um, and I believe this is like the Naga hide material, but um, I came across this on Joanne Fabrics, and um, boy, talk about beautiful. Look at this. It's the um, 
called the potting soil is the color, I guess. But I mean, talk about for a painterly photographic background and a ten dollars a yard. You know, for forty bucks, you could get four yards of this, and um, you know, have a, a gorgeous background to use for bridal portraits or for business portraits. Um, very old school style, but um, you know, very nice and. Um, very similar to the, the portrait I showed you earlier, the young man with the goose. But um, there's Joanne Fabrics in Dayton, and, um, you know, nice to get. So this is another one, and again, very cheap, this, this material. But look at how pretty it is. So simple. You don't have to spend, you know, $100, $200 on a background. Um, you could simply get this, and I'm going to show you how I... Um, actually use this and take care of it so it doesn't look all wrinkled and everything in the background and a lot of times even when you buy the um, backgrounds from like a photography store or online from a photoshop and you buy the canvas and linen ones when they come they're just all stuffed in a bag and then you practically have to like iron them and steam them to get all the wrinkles out if you don't want to have the wrinkles where when these are actually rolled up is what I'm going to show you how to, to use them um, when you roll them up, you'll, you'll find they won't have any wrinkles in it and they will be simple to change with the system that I'm going to show you. Now, if you do have a, a permanent space to shoot, the, the system I'm going to show you works really great for that and you won't have to buy background stands, which is another expense. But if you're moving around or doing a lot of stuff on location, then you could still use these backgrounds with background stands. Um, They'll be interchangeable, so I'll show you that too. And here's a uh, another thing I used as a background a lot, uh, mostly for for doing seniors. And um, mine was more of a brown color, but um, this is at uh, MexicanBlankets.com. Let's see if I can scroll down there, yeah, right up there, so um, you can find these. But um, these work really good too. You'll again, you'll put them on a um, a wooden dowel or a, a wooden um, a two by two, and roll them up, and then you can just simply unroll them, and they won't have any wrinkles or anything in them when you're using them as a background. But again, just another alternative to give you a different look. And um, you know they have a ton of them on this website, and you can out, all find them on eBay and everything too, maybe even cheaper. But um, this was just something I pulled up quickly to show you. Um, you know, another idea to have a, a different kind of background. So, you know, again, every, like what I did when I first started my studio was every week when I um, would go through my banking and see how much money I made and stuff, I would actually take some of that money and go buy another background. And, you know, by the time I um, sold my studio, I think I had like 30 different backgrounds there to, to use. So um, gives you quite an alternative, to, you know, an easy way to have a, a vast variety of backgrounds for a fairly uh, low cost. And then I wanted to talk about using raw canvas and um, give you a couple ideas and a couple pointers for, for using raw canvas. Now, if you do paint, um, if you happen to, you know, be an artist that paints also, um, you, you can actually paint yourself some backgrounds and you can paint them on raw canvas. Now, I just pulled this up. Um, I think I searched raw canvas, and this came up on Harbor Freight, which, um, you know, is a really low-cost, um, you know, supply store for mechanics and so forth or workers. So this is a dro painting drop cloth, and you can actually find these, like, in Lowe's, too, and, like, uh, Home Depot, so a number of different places. But the thing you need to watch on these um, is a lot of them are simply smaller pieces of canvas that are sewn together and there's actually line marks in them so and sewing marks so you would always have these lines in the background now you could you I mean if you were going to hand paint it you could um, you know kind of make those into the design and paint some type of a design um, you know on the canvas if you were going to do some you know scene or something you could use those lines to to kind of play into them but if it's if it's not one big piece of canvas and you might have to even open up and look at it um at the store but i usually try to get you know a, a piece of canvas that's a solid piece and not not like this is a 9 by 12 and it, it might be smaller pieces sewn together to make that 9 by 12 so you're always going to see that overlap in the stitching 
you know, in the pieces. So that's that's just a point or something to look for. Um, you could also go online to like an art supply place like Dick Blick and you could order uh, painter's canvas, which which I tend to prefer to use. It's a little bit more money. Um, you can get it sized or unsized. Um, for the, the background I'm going to describe to you or, or tell you about making, I would actually get it unsized. But if you're going to paint the background, um, you know, with different paints, you could even use house paint to, you know, paint a background. You could paint like a, a you know, a color down first, and then you could use a big, a big sponge, one of those sea sponges that, um, you know, are kind of round and, and you could actually dip that in a different color paint and blot that down on top of it and, um, you know, create a very painterly background like the um, the Naugahyde brown I showed you and so forth. And then the other thing you could do, too, and this will be for the, the other background I'm going to describe to you, is if you get an empty Windex spray bottle, you could just get some different colors of acrylic paint. Like, let's say we, we got this canvas and we painted it all brown with just some, um, you know, probably medium toned brown house paint. So the whole thing was painted, you know, lay it out in your driveway, get a roller and then paint it. And then you could get a sponge um, and, you know, do some, make the edges of the background darker and, you know, blend it in so it's kind of circular in the middle um, using a darker brown. But then you still want to have a little bit of color in there. So the way that you get a little bit of color in there is you, you go to the art supply store and you get some different, you um, different colors of acrylic like on the brown I would probably use like a dark green and maybe a darkish blue maybe even a dark red and you, you squirt that bottle into a um, into a Windex spray bottle and then you mix a little bit of water in there and really shake it up good and then you can just you know go around and spray some splats of um of the different color paint onto the background and um, works very nice for doing that and it'll also work very nice for the dyed background so you know Thinking about the dyed background, let me let me give you some ideas with that. Now, the way that I do a dyed background, and I will make a um, video um, in the future on you know how to make a dyed background because I actually just described this to my studio art classes. Um, you know, I don't, quite a while ago, I, I had this one guy that was really into this, and he actually started a business on eBay. Um, you probably can find his backgrounds on eBay today, but he went. He went all out and um, he got out of photography and just went out a lot into making backgrounds to make money. So, um, but you you would get the the canvas or muslin material, and what you're going to do is you're going to get some writ dye. So if you're not familiar with writ dye, um, you know back in the day a lot of people followed the Grateful Dead and they had tie dyed T-shirts. So what you would do is go down to Kroger's or your you know hardware store and they have dye that um, in different colors brown purple red you know just about any color you want and what you would do with this raw canvas is you're going to get yourself a, a very clean probably brand new plastic trash can um, and then you can use it as a trash can afterwards but you want to you know go buy a trash can at Lowe's or something and you'll fill that up with um, you know hot water and mix in several packets of dye they actually have the writ dye in a liquid too that's really good so you want to make it pretty strong and then what you're going to do is unfold this canvas um, or muslin material and press it down and st you know start with the bottom and start pushing it down in there so you want it to be all you don't want it to be folded when you put it in there but kind of all open and like jam down in there and, and smash together um, so maybe fill the trash can just like about half up with water before you add the dye and then make sure you mix it good and then when you jam this down in there what you're going to let it do is you're just going to let it set for a day or two um, you can actually you know go through and uh, maybe take a broomstick and push it around a little bit um, you know, stir it a little bit every, you know, six hours or so. And when you take that out, what you'll do is lay that out on your driveway and just let that dry. Now, I never really even rinse mine. I just, you know, let them dry. Um, you could do it on your, if you have grass, you could do it on the green grass. I would actually do one of these for you, but it's kind of cold outside right now. I think it's 20 degrees and the, it would just end up being frozen. But um, you pretty much have to do this outside unless you have a big basement or something that you could, um, you know, do this in but you would um you know just let that soak for a day or two and then pull that out and let that dry and you'd have a very painterly background and then what you could do is um 
go on top of that with the spray bottles, like I mentioned, with um, different colors of acrylic paint, put some little different splots on there. And you could even make up some some other dye if you wanted to, um, you know, in a, in a bucket or something that was a lot stronger. And then, again, go around the edges to kind of give you that big netted effect so that um, it would be darker at the edges and, you know, lighter in the center is the idea with a... Um, with a photographic background like that. So another way to, to come up with it, um, come up with a cool background at a low cost. So let me show you how I actually hang these in um, my studio. So one of the things that um, you have to think about when you're starting to work with people or you're having clients come in is you want things to be very professional and clean. Um, and you also want to be able to change your backgrounds um, you know, pretty fast, um, pretty speedy. So you don't want them sitting there, you know, waiting on you. You know, people's time is money, so you don't want to waste their time either. So this method that I came up with in my, my studio that I had in Youngstown, Ohio, worked really well. And what I used is these... Um, these J hooks that screw into the ceiling, and you can get these at Lowe's. And um, here I'll show you a picture of them real quick. So that's what they look like, and this is on Lowe's website, and they're two dollars and forty-eight cents a piece. So you got five bucks in your hanging system, you know. Versus um, if you wanted to just buy a background stand set that holds backgrounds, you actually with that you have you know probably around a hundred dollars. You know, depending on how good a one you buy, you might get up to like three or four hundred dollars. Um, the ones that you tend to buy that are under a hundred dollars are, um, you know, pretty low quality. They, they do, they're made with plastic on the parts that, um, you know, fold out. So they end up breaking and stuff. And, you know, I never really had much luck with the cheap ones, um, without spending, you know, around four hundred dollars for a background stand that can hold heavy backgrounds. But, you know, this works simple. You just put this in the ceiling. So let's go back to the drawing here so these are going directly into my ceiling um that i had into you know in the studio and right through the uh, plaster ceiling and then into the stud so i used the stud finder to find the place to screw these in these are the same hooks that you also use to hang a bicycle if you want that and then what i did was i took each of these pieces of material and i went to lowe's and i bought a real nice piece of two by two by eight wood um and then I used uh, upholstery staples or tacks. I, I used the actual tacks, and I so that it looked. And I you can get some really cool tacks at like Joanne Fabrics that you know have have an accent. And it's not going to be in the photograph, but it at least you know people when people are looking at your stuff, it looks it makes it look more classy, um, you know, than than shabby. So that's that's also really important when you're you know bringing people into your studio is you want it to look as professional as possible. Um, and clean as possible. So it's something to think about. And what I would do then is I would simply, you know, when I would take this down, this, this is hung on the J hooks, I would take these down and roll it up and I'd put it in the corner where I had more of them. And then when I wanted to change another one, I could simply, um, you know, take it up there and, you know, unroll it. And you can also get these, um, the, the two by twos are square, but what I found that actually worked even better is they have these, um, like, uh, banister um, or stairway rails that that are semi round you know they're rounded so and you could actually even get a dowel rod if you could get one that's long enough and um, you know thick enough but like you know and you would put if you had it on a round thing it would actually unroll very easily um, but they, they don't unroll that hard on a square thing. I usually just grab the side of it over here and I I started turning it and um, you know I'd lift it up off of the off of the J thing right here and just turn it and it would drop the background right down and you know in a matter of probably two minutes I would have the background changed which um you know allows you to do more portraits if you're you know doing bulk portraits but it also the probably the most important thing is you don't waste people's times um if you're if you're messing around um you know setting up backgrounds and stuff and taking 10 or 15 minutes you're really wasting a person's time and they may end up giving you a bad review so um, you know, people don't have a lot of time and when they, they come into your studio, they want you to be professional and, um, you know, shoot the portrait and get them out of there. So this is a, a, a unique way to do that. And here's a, just a, a quick picture of these um, upholstery 
um, tax that I was talking about. You know, not using thumbtacks, but these upholstery tacks. They have a much longer nail on them, and you know, you could put these on on to hold the background to the wooden post or to the wooden um, pole, the dowel, and these will work really good and keep it on there, and um, you know, it won't ever come loose. So that, that's something else to to use. And these are just from Fabric Farms. I just Googled it online again and found you know found these. You could use. You don't have to use these exact ones. You can use any ones you want. But um, this will just help to secure that material to the background, so you have a, a nice sturdy background going up there. So I hope that helps in. Um, give you some ideas to coming up with a quick background. Um, you know, other things you could do, I thought of this just before I, um, you know, ended this, is that I've actually made backgrounds too for, for art projects, like when I was doing art photos, not so much so for, um, you know, business commercial like portraits, but, you know, I've made backgrounds by um, taping or gluing a newspaper, you know, on a, a big board and stuff. So I could use that as the background, a background, a newspaper that was torn and um, also brown paper bags. If you took brown paper bags and, and, you know, just glued a whole bunch of them together so that you had a, um, you know, an eight foot by eight foot, um, you know, background that's all wrinkled and stuff and, um, you could spray some paint on that and, you know, come up with a creative background that way. Um, you know, old drapes, um, you know, just a lot of different things you can use. So uh, I just wanted to give you those ideas too. So anyway, if you like this um, video, if this helps you, please give me a thumbs up and um, smash that subscribe uh, button and subscribe to my channel and I'll, I will keep making these videos. Um, thanks. Have a great day.